In this video, we're going to continue on our uh, Inkscape challenges to learn the basics of Inkscape for designing SVG files to import into Design Space. So today we're going to uh, do some very basic text functions and a couple of more features uh, we'll be introducing you to. So the first thing we're going to do again is turn off this document border. And we do that by going to File, Document Properties, and uncheck the Show Page Border box. Next, over here on the left, we're going to choose the uh, Create and Edit Text Objects button. And then we'll click in the screen, and we're going to type something. And uh, for example, this video, we're going to type Troy Tube. And as you can see, it's pretty small, so I'll change back to my selection tool. And I'll hold the control key and adjust so that it maintains its perspective. And just so that you're aware, in my previous video, I uh, directed you to hold shift control when we created an object. And so if you hold control while you adjust the size, it will keep its perspective. If you hold control shift while you adjust the size, it will keep its center and keep its perspective as well. So there's the difference. If you Again, if you use control, and it will just simply adjust the size based on the top left position. And if you hold control shift, it will adjust based on the center and keep its perspective. So now to change the font, we're going to go back to the selection tool and double click inside of the text and it will highlight it. And up here on the left, we'll change the text to Arial Black. This is a common font everyone should have on their system. And we'll change back to the selection tool and again, we're going to go talk about paths. So remember, everything has to be converted to a path. So if you go to the view display mode outline view, you'll see that you do not have outlines. This is not a path. It is still a text object. And if you were to save this as an SVG file right now, it would be rejected by Design Space and uh, it would come in as a blank file because there are no paths in the file. So uh, you can see that I'm still in outline. Uh, view by the way it's up here on the top of the title bar so we'll go back to display mode normal and so the first uh, step we're going to do next is go to the path menu and select object to path now when I did that it doesn't appear that anything happened but if I look at it in outline mode again you'll see that it is now paths so you can see the outline so we'll go back to normal mode and now that this is uh, a path, these letters are separated and they are now grouped objects. So if I go to the object menu and select ungroup, you'll see that it now made these letters uh, separate objects that are selected. Now I'm going to undo that and go back to where they're grouped and show you something real quick. Now that it's a path, uh, if we select the node editor, when we highlight over each letter, you see that it turns, gives you like a little red outline. And if I click on it, it shows each letter individually. So now I'll go back to the object menu and we will ungroup. And you see that these letters are separated once again. And just like before, if I change the node editor, these are individually editable. I'm just clicking on them to show you. So now what I'm going to do is select four of the letters, the first four letters. And I'm going to go back to path and union. And now that is one object. Now you see sometimes you, that on my screen, it, you may or may not see this in the video, but it cut off uh, part of the letter. And that's just because it's not refreshed properly. Uh, that's just like a little glitch in Inkscape I've noticed happens sometimes. So if I click on an object and I zoom in and then back out using the uh, plus and minus keys, it will uh, refresh the screen and show that properly. And so next, I'm going to highlight the next four letters, and we're going to go back to Path and Union again. And as you see, these are two separate editable objects. And if I use my Node Editor now, uh, because it is one object, you'll see that when I click on it or when I mouse over it, it selects the entire uh, group of letters and not just individual letters. So now we're going to change the color. We're going to change uh, the second part to red. And now we have two separate pieces, and one is black and one is red. Now, what that's going to do for us is it's going to give us different layers in, in the design space when we import this. 
So next we're going to uh, select the entire word and we'll go to object and group. So uh, again, that didn't refresh properly there. It didn't really take away part of my letter. It just didn't refresh. So zoom out, zoom in back uh, real quick and it'll come back. And so uh, now that we've grouped it, uh, it is going to, it should import into design space as two separate grouped layers with two different colors. And we're going to adjust the size of it before we do this. Up here on the top, we're going to select the little drop down under the height. Uh, you have height and width. And we're going to change that to inches. And so right now we're looking at a dimension of an 18 inch wide uh, object with uh, 3.7 inches tall. So we're going to adjust the uh, width. Uh, we'll change that to 6 inches. And I want to click this little lock here to keep the perspective so that when we hit enter, it's going to change the height along with the width. So you might want to keep an eye on these measurements as you're working with designs because without that document properties border, uh, you really don't have a perspective on how big your design is. So you could easily be making something that's like five feet wide or something. So it's always a good idea to change this to inches and just keep an eye on the size. Now the interesting thing is this is a six inch wide, it's exactly six inches. Uh, we went to 6.01 there, so I'm going to change that. So it's exactly six inches. And when I import it into Design Space, I'm expecting it to be just a little different. Design Space does not, for some reason, import SVG files at their exact size. Um, I don't know if that's a bug that they'll be fixing or whatever, but right now we should see just a little bit of difference. It might be something like 5.9 or 6.1 inches, but we'll see in just a minute. So now we have our object. Uh, as mentioned, it is two different objects that are grouped. And again, if we go to the view display mode outline view, you can see that we have our paths that uh, appear to be correct. So uh, view display mode normal. And now we'll save this. And we'll call this one challenge2.svg. And we'll change it to a plain SVG file once again. Everything should be a plain SVG. And now we'll switch over to design space and upload the image. Select our challenge2.svg file, and as you can see, our preview looks correct. And we'll insert that into our project. And as you can see, it is quite a bit larger than 6 inches, like I said it would be. So if we go to the Edit tab, we see that it imported at 7, almost 7.5 inches. So this is just a glitch. I'm not sure, again, what causes it, but... You just have to be careful of that. So we can change that back to six inches exactly. And if we go back to the layers panel, as I mentioned, uh, what I expected was to get two different layers that are grouped, and you do indeed have that. You can right click on it and ungroup it. And now we have two pieces we can move around separately. And if I click go, I should get two mats, one black and one red. And that completes this challenge. So if you were able to do this completely, uh, pull it up in uh, Design Space, take a screenshot, and post it on Facebook, and tag me in it, and I would appreciate it. So to recap the things that we learned in this video challenge, uh, we created a text object, and we then adjusted the size and kept the width times height perspective. Uh, using the control key while adjusting, again, keeps your position. Uh, to the top left and it keeps the perspective and then holding control shift adjusts the uh, size while keeping the perspective based on the center position. We change the font in the uh, text object and then we change the text object to a path and at this point it was no longer text it was an object. So uh, then we uh, ungrouped the text objects and we selected parts of the text objects uh, which are the converted text and so a lot of people get confused on that, so they say, well, my SVG does contain text. Well, it's an object that looks like it's in the shape of text once you convert it. So uh, then we use the path union command to combine parts of the objects, and we change the color of one of the two objects to create uh, two separate objects that will be layers when they're imported into design space. And then we grouped those two objects, and we adjusted the size to exactly six inches wide and lock the perspective when we did that. Again, when you import it into Design Space, it may come in as a little bit different size. 
we saved it as a plain SVG and imported it into Design Space. And then we changed the size in Design Space to 6 inches to match the original design. Again, once you have completed this, if you would screenshot your design and post it on Facebook and tag me out, I would appreciate it. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.